Hi there and welcome to the Muir Report. My name's Jeff Muir. A few days ago, I sat down with Peter Rogers, a well-known businessman in Bathurst, and we talked about the Australian Fossil and Mineral Museum. Inside the museum, there's a real live, or dead, should I say, Tyrannosaurus rex skeleton. It's got a very, very interesting history, and 20 years ago, Peter Rogers and others donated over $200,000 to get the Fossil and Mineral Museum up and running. I want you to watch or listen to this 15-minute interview if you're interested in why our Bathurst Regional Council is due for a change of management and a change of leadership. Welcome to the Muir Report, giving the silent majority a voice. And uh, welcome back to Peter Rogers. I understand, Peter, you've had a lot to do with the Fossil Museum uh, just across the road from where we're recording this, this, uh, this video. And it's a really interesting story because it's not just a fossil museum to you, is it? Correct. And uh, so how did you first get involved? The, the mayor at the time was a guy called Ian McIntosh, who I knew quite well. And uh, there was Warren Somerville, that's his collection. He was in Orange. He, he had an orchard up there and he used to have all his collection within the orchard shed. Um, and he charged people to come through and have a look. As, as it got on, he wanted somewhere to house it that would be in trust for people to see into the future. Mm. And Ian McIntosh got involved and he came and saw me and he said, what do you think that would be if we could open that up in Bathurst? There's a fossil museum. And I thought, mate, it was unreal. So I went and had a look at the collection, which is, like it's a national collection, it's incredible. And, and uh, one of the iconic pieces in there is a full skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Now he had that on loan to the Australian Museum because yeah. he had nowhere to put it. And he, what, he found it in the first place? My word. Yeah. yeah. Where did he find it? You know? I, no, I couldn't, I couldn't answer that. But Rex, Rex Land. <laughs> mate, he, he went, he was quite an incredible bloke. He went all around Australia, mm -hmm. sorry, all around the world, trading things and going to museums where they had things stored down in the basement. And, yeah. and he, he knew what was good and what wasn't good and he swapped. And, and uh, he was the only thing, he, he could come back, he came back with a fossil on the front seat with him on a plane because he had the Prime Minister's thing that they couldn't put him off. <laughs> so that was, that was how it was. So when Ian approached us, we said, great. And uh, the government at the time had just given the, the school over there to the council, and uh, they didn't have a, an actual thing for it. So we got together, we said, gee, that'd be great to house it in there. And we then started fundraising. And we, we got quite a whole lot of benefactors, of which I was one. Mm -hmm. And we, put a, well, we raised a substantial amount of money any idea how much? Like, oh, it was a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, and you know, this is what 20, 30 years ago. Probably 20, 20 years ago. So yeah. it was a bit, like it was a big hit, yeah. you know. And um, but it was a great, a great thing. So that's been sitting there. We have always been complaining about the entrance because being my shop over the road, I don't know how many times I've ducked across the road and said, "Oh, you've got to go around the back to the entrance." <laughs> like that's how bad it was. But that that fell on deaf ears. And then it wasn't until I raised in our other um, interviews the empty shops that I looked into it and I found out it was losing money, you know? Um, and it shouldn't be. Mm. It, it's, it's fantastic. So in the 1920 financial year, what was it, what was, how much did it lose? But I lost about 170,000. 170. 170,000. Yeah. It's been losing money every year. Yeah. Um, which is, it shouldn't be. Yeah. And, so uh, what then, what did you do? Well, the, the being in business myself, whenever we had anything that I'm not aware of, you call in an expert, mm. you know? And uh, so I started to ring around to find out an expert, and I found out, uh, or I got given the name of the people that own the um, Dinosaur Museum in Canberra. Mm -hmm. And so I interviewed those, and then they came to Bathurst and had a look at, at, at the property here and what we've got. Uh, they then introduced me to Another guy who runs all these, he's got about 40 mines throughout the world and he, he works out of Victoria. I've got emails from him and it became a, a bit of a chat. And they advised our shop over here was not really the correct thing. We should be earning a lot more. It, it would pay for the museum mm -hmm. if we got that shop up and running properly. Yeah. The, and the, so, so, with, and so there's a measure there, um, how many people come in the door yes. and how much retail sales there are per Correct. customer or per, per entrance. Correct. And that figure should be, what, one for one or? 
it should be a dollar ten for every dollar we earn on on entry fee. It should be a dollar ten on the shop. Okay. Um, yeah. So some of the the where they advise you to buy these you know things mm. for the shop and how to set it up. Some of them can have six hundred percent profit. Yeah. So uh, and and also it's like um, going like I've just done a recent trip to Movie World, had to buy the T-shirt yep. for the kids, had to buy this and that. You know they came over with so you know about five or six the little photo book, yep. and so um, artifacts like that are really important for people to take home to men to, so we can anchor the mo the fossil museum in Bathurst as part of what they did when they came here. Exactly, those things last forever. Ever. People don't throw them out. Little no. dinosaurs, goats passed down family to, you know, father to son, you know, mother to daughter. Um, so retail sales are a really important part of making sure that we have this continuity of marketing through through the ages. Yeah? We also don't cross-market our other museums. You know, like if they come to the Fossil Museum, we should have a fair bit of stuff there on the Motor Museum yeah. or the Railway Museum mm. and vice versa. Why wouldn't we have a dinosaur at the Railway Museum saying you visited the Railway Museum, come and have a look at my friends yeah. up at the Dinosaur Museum. Yeah. Or if you go to the Motor Museum, it's 50% off to go to the Fossil Museum because exactly. then we're going to make another dollar on you anyhow. Exactly. And so it's going to pay for it. It's not like we're giving anything no. away. No. And we're improving the customer experience, which is the visitor experience. Like yeah. it's, it's business 101 to you and me. Exactly. Yeah. So we run into a, what sort of wall is it <laughs> when, when we go and talk to these, uh, these council guys? Look, one of the problems is, and, and I don't want to bag the council because everyone's quite easy to do that, but the, the bureaucrats that are there are not geared up, you know, for, for enterprise or promotion. It's, it's not in their DNA. Mm. It's not even in their proper university degrees, you know. Well, it's definitely not in those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, and so we need experts to, yeah. to do that, as, as does Orange or Mudgy. Mm. It's pretty simple, yeah. you know. So your recommendation is to take the advice of the experts who are willing to come for free and implement. Exactly. And the problem is? We haven't done that after I've got their names and got their... Uh, I've even got all their daily figures. You brought them out here? I brought them out here. I've taken them through our... our yeah. Introduced them to the right Introdu people? Well... No, because I couldn't actually get the council to come and meet with them. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, no, I didn't introduce it them. It seems like a small problem. Yeah. It is a problem. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, what's next then in that campaign? Because I know you haven't given up on this. No, I haven't given up. No, we I, haven't mentioned Dennis in this. Is no, we haven't got to Dennis yet. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the problems I've got is uh, we, we, the experts have said we need like a big dinosaur out the front of that building. Mm. So I've actually brought town planning down because once again it's a heritage building. Mm. So I thought that if I applied to put a big dinosaur out the front, mm, no. even though something minor wouldn't happen. But the, the, the actual town planning requires supportive of that. Yeah. So I then chased around with these experts to find out who supplies dinosaurs. And I got on to the guy in Queensland, it's called Nature Works, they build them. He's done, you know, movie world, he does all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Anyhow, he said, Peter. You do need a dinosaur down there. I know your museum, uh, blah, blah, blah. He said, but there would be funding from the government. Mm. You would get a grant. You don't have, I was looking to raise money within the community. Yeah. He said, you won't have to do that. You will raise a grant because you're up and running. Mm. That's the big key. Yeah. Not, you know, not, not you, pie in the sky. Not pie in the sky. You are there. So I then took that to council as well. Mm. <laughs> we keep running back. Keep coming back to this. I took this to council. Yes, um, it's difficult for me to say uh, that they that they're. Um, we, if look, there's a lot of clever, intelligent, and lovely people. It, let's forget about them being clever, intelligent, and lovely. Yep. As a collective, you've heard yep. me say this before. If we treat government as a whole, yep. Stupid, slow, and dumb. Yep. Then we're not disappointed with the outcome. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, uh, and I don't like putting words in your mouth like that, but it, that certainly that's my, my thing is that there's some really, really good, great people who work in council, but when they get all tied up with that red tape, nothing um, happens. Nothing happens, yeah. It, it's, and it's disappointing. And I mean, 
There's only so much I can do, Jeff, because I don't own the Fossil Museum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. And and we, I, don't. I don't either, no. and nobody does, and that's half the problem. That's half the problem. Well, so more we're, than half the problem. We're talking on facilities that are owned by the community, yeah. and uh, I'm quite happy to, as, as you know, I kick the tin for my own signs or my own brochures, mm. and, and some of the business community are great supporters of everything, you know, if they've got something to support. Yeah. But we need to get a realisation up there that we need to hire someone that, that's an expert in that business to mm. promote our assets. We do. And, well, let's finish it up there because, it look, we could go on and on and, and yep. beat our head against a big brick wall. Um, we're not going to do that. We're going to yep. be clever. We're going to be smart. We're just going to keep saying, here we are. Yep. This is what we want to achieve. Yep. It's not outside the box. We're not yep. trying to change the direction of the world. No. We just want to increase the profitability and the user interface of these wonderful facilities, yep. like a national fossil museum, yep. for the betterment of everybody else and including us in town. Jeff, if I could just say one thing. A bit of history's probably been forgotten. When Ian